Daniel chapter 9, 24 to 27. Daniel has some prophecies in it that are astounding. They uh, corroborate the, the fact that the God's word is God's word with the, the unbelievable accuracy and quantity of prophecies that have been fulfilled throughout Scripture. And uh, this is one of these prophe prophecies that people have argued about. Let's take a look at what it says. The top page of the Bible, a study manual's website. Go to the letter D for Daniel. 9, Daniel 9. Twenty-four to twenty-seven. <clears throat> now, Daniel nine twenty-four. Read it here above. The Hebrew phrase transliterated. What this says. Rendered seventy sevens in Daniel nine twenty-four refers to seventy sevens of years, four hundred ninety years. Explanation below. Some corroborative evidence. Now, that number of 490, 490 years is significant. God decreed a 490 year period for Israel and Jerusalem in which there will be a finish of transgression an end to sins, atonement for wickedness, the bringing in of everlasting righteousness, fulfillment of all visions and prophecies, and anointing of Jesus Christ as King of Kings. Wow. Now the name Jesus Christ doesn't appear in Daniel, but we can corroborate that that's the one whom this Old Testament passage refers to, a finish to transgression. And as the definite article in the original Hebrew text specifically refers to the ending of Israel's willful disobedience to the sovereignty and will of God as evidenced by her persistent violation of the Mosaic law. <clears throat> so, Zechariah 12, 1 to 13, 1 corroborates this. The word translated, transgression, as the root meaning to rebel. So, now, the second point, to put an end to sins. It contains the Hebrew word here, an end to, end to, which refers to completion or ending of something, and then the Hebrew word pronounced this, I don't dare pronounce them, literally meaning sins, is plural and appears without the definite article. It refers to the historical end of the, the problem of acts of sin. This refers to the actual sins of daily life being ended, 490 years. And uh, since these sins are prompted by the sin of rebellion against God's rule, they will not end until that root sin is finished at Christ's second coming. An atonement for wickedness. In view of the context of verse 924, to atone for wickedness is that verse that has in view your people, Israel. The time frame of this event is evidently at Christ's second coming at the end of the 70th week when all Israelites of that end time period will atone for their personal sins, just as all individuals do, by expressing a moment of faith alone in Christ alone for them. So all Israelites will trust alone in Christ alone at his second coming and become the fulfillment peoples, God's chosen people, that generation of the new covenant for them and in them. Jesus Christ atoned for Israel's perverse sins when he died on the cross, but that atonement will not actually be applied to Israel until the nation personally appropriates it by all, one unanimously accepting Jesus as its 
Messiah and Savior. Israel will not do that until Christ's second coming at the end of the 490 years. And point four, a bringing in of everlasting righteousness. To bring in, the verb is this passage, to bring in means to cause to come in. A causing to come in by God of a period of rule of everlasting righteousness. This can only refer to that period of time in history beginning with the millennial rule, Christ's second coming and his rule. There is no other period in history which brings in a period of everlasting righteousness and it will continue forever into eternity future. Hence, it is described as everlasting. There's corroborative evidence and uh, details. Point five, a sealing up, fulfillment of visions and prophecies. All visions and prophecies, therefore, in Scripture, will be sealed, fulfilled and completed, and thereby sealed up as completed, no longer applicable fulfillment or fulfillment. And finally, number six, an anointing of the Most Holy One means anoint and enthrone the Most Holy, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This will occur at the beginning of Christ's millennial rule. So we go on to Daniel 9, 25 to 26. We get the beginning point of this 490, 490 year period. Verse 25 and 26. A. Artaxerxes Longamanus, king of Babylon, issued a decree in 445 BC to rebuild Jerusalem. He was the king of Babylon. There's a decree. He permitted Nehemiah to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. He did this on the Jewish calendar month and day of Nisan 1, 445 B.C. And there's corroboration of Nehemiah 2, 1 to 8. This edict given by Artaxerxes needs to be pinpointed in history in order to test the accuracy of Daniel's prophecy. And so we have some corroborative evidence to that. And in Ezra 1, 2. The anointed one. We can confirm is the referring to the ruler, the Lord Jesus Christ. The only one in scripture that perfectly meets this prophecy. Remember, we read 9, 25 and 26. Anointed one in Greek is Christos, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. So until our Lord appears in his first coming to present himself as Messiah, ruler of the world, he will be rejected as Messiah and crucified as scripture prophesies. So the decree to rebuild Jerusalem is to begin a time span of 483 years until the crucifixion of our Lord. 483 Time span from Artaxerxes' decree to the first Palm Sunday prophesied by Daniel is 483 years, or 173,880 days. And there's how we figure that. Seven sevens, 49 years. 72 sevens, 434. 483 Jewish calendar years by 360 is 173,880 days. We have some writings by Sir Robert Anderson and G.B. Airy of the Royal Observatory, Greenwich, England.
And here's a chart we have. And we arrived at these calculations. So Jerusalem will be rebuilt in times of trouble. And uh, Jerusalem was rebuilt back in ancient times by Nehemiah in times of trouble. Nehemiah chapters 2 to 6. Going into this in detail gives you confidence that Scripture is amazingly accurate. 100% so far in all the prophecies fulfilled. So, the key is, at the end of 483 years, the Messiah will be pre present himself to Israel on Sunday, Nisan 10, AD 32. And then he will be executed as a criminal, crucified, but not for himself, not for what he himself did. He's cut off, ex executed as a criminal, but he didn't do anything. In Matthew 21, 1 to 11. Now, Daniel's prophecy of 490 years jumps from our Lord's crucifixion at year 483, skipping any mention of this present church age and leaping 2,000 years to the remaining seven years, a period of the Antichrist and Great Tribulation tribulation period. The church did not exist during any part of the first 69 weeks or 483 years of the 70 weeks. So we can eliminate that church age period. It's not included in the prophecy. So God temporarily interrupted his 70 weeks program for Israel at the end of the first 69 weeks, or 483 years, with a gap of time that is now approaching 2,000 years in duration. God started the church age very shortly after he interrupted his 70 weeks program for Israel and Jerusalem with a gap of time at the end of the first 69 weeks. God does not intend the church to be present on the earth for any part of the 70 weeks or 490 years. He has determined specifically for Israel and Jerusalem. Corroborates the purpose of the rapture. And point L, God intends the church to be present on the earth specifically during the interrupting gap of time between the end of the first 69 weeks or 483 years and the beginning of the 70th week or last seven years. But God will remove the church from the earth before the 70th week begins with the resumption of a 70 weeks program from, for Israel and Jerusalem. Conclusion, the church is raptured before the seven year tribulation period as God resumes the 70 weeks program with Israel in the 70th week. There's no mid-trip or end-trip, uh, mid-trip or uh, end-trip uh, rapture. So the plan of the age of the Gentiles, which is yet future, will come like a flood climaxing with maximum war and our Lord's second coming. Luke 21-24 corroborates. Daniel 9-27. Read that verse. And below we have some breakdown of it. The Antichrist will confirm a covenant with Israel for seven years. In the middle of the seven-year tribulation period, Daniel's 70th week, the Antichrist will break his covenant with Israel, desecrate the temple with his image, declare himself world, world, world ruler, and persecute all who are, will not worship him. Corroborates that. Just barely got done under the 15 minutes. This is an excellent 